Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Did the ancient architects of the Nile's great civilization plant the seeds that would blossom into the brotherhood of Freemasonry? Or are these connections merely the constructs of modern Western imagination? Freemasonry is a well-known and influential society that exists globally, including in Western countries. It's believed that many of Africa's political leaders are members of Freemasonry or connected to similar groups like the Rotary Club or Lions Club. This means Freemasonry can significantly impact the lives of millions of people in Africa. People across Africa are aware of Freemasonry's presence and influence. They often have different interpretations and opinions about it. One common belief is that Freemasonry originated from ancient Egypt. To answer this pertinent question, we must explore the concept of secret societies and their existence on the African continent. Africa, being the birthplace of humanity, is believed to have been home to the world's first secret societies. Our ancestors realized that knowledge could be a double-edged sword. It could lead to progress and benefit, mahat, or it could bring misfortune and destruction, isfet, if misused. To prevent the misuse of knowledge, our ancestors kept certain information secret and shared it only with those they trusted. This led to the creation of secret societies and brotherhoods, which held important knowledge about history, traditions, and sciences. These African secret societies became gathering places for the elite, intellectuals, and leaders, playing a significant role in the continent's history. Across Africa, various types of secret societies have always existed, such as brotherhoods of builders, hunters, medicine doctors, astronomers, historians, and priests. These societies, including those in pharaonic civilization, were guided by the principles of ma'at, that is, the principles of order, justice, truth, harmony, etc. These societies were instrumental in building the civilizations that emerged across Africa following the collapse of the pharaonic era. This leads to a question. Did Western secret societies like Freemasonry originate from these ancient Egyptian brotherhoods. While Freemasonry often uses ancient Egyptian symbols, like the Ankh cross, pyramids, and solar symbols, in their logos and claims roots in the Pharaonic period, this does not necessarily signify a historical link to Egypt. Our ancestors in the Nile Valley, known for their remarkable building skills, used various tools for their construction projects. These tools were not just for practical use, but also held symbolic value as a tribute to their creator, often referred to as Imana or Amen. Interestingly, some of these tools, like the square, are still recognized today, as they appear in the symbols and logos of modern groups like the Freemasons. Furthermore, the pyramid is a symbol widely used by Western Masonic lodges and related secret societies. Why this fascination with ancient Egypt? We are aware of attempts to claim Egypt as a Western civilization during the period of enlightenment. This very period gave birth to notable Western secret societies like the Freemasons. The belief that Freemasons originated from ancient Egypt is not supported by historical evidence. There has yet to be a written record of the practices of Freemasonry by ancient Egyptians. This suggests that the idea of these societies tracing their roots back to ancient Egypt needs to be clarified. To understand the origins of Freemasonry, one should look to the West, where the earliest secret societies emerged. These societies have their roots in ancient Greece, a civilization that was significantly influenced by the knowledge and culture of ancient, predominantly Black and African Egypt. Greece adopted the concept of secret societies from Egypt. Pythagoras himself was known to have learned much from the Egyptians. Pythagoras traveled to Egypt, and even with recommendations from the Greek philosopher Thales, he faced challenges being accepted by the black priests of Egypt. In Africa, these priests were known for being very secretive and hesitant to share their knowledge with outsiders. Pythagoras was moved from one temple to another, and he showed his commitment by completing various challenging tasks. His determination eventually won over the priests. They accepted him, performed a circumcision as part of his initiation, and then spent 19 years teaching him. Herodotus mentioned Pythagoras as someone who borrowed very heavily from Egyptian knowledge. We have covered this in greater detail in a recent video.
The Greeks also adapted Egyptian deities and concepts, transforming the Egyptian god Jehuti, Thoth, into their god Hermes. This led to the development of ideas like Hermeticism and alchemy, which continued through Greco-Roman times and into the European Middle Ages. So could Freemasonry have started in ancient Greece or Rome? Despite the influence of ancient Greece and Rome on Western secret societies, there's no historical record that Freemasonry started during those times. Even when researchers look into the Western Middle Ages, a period when ideas like Hermeticism and alchemy were prevalent, there's still no clear evidence of the beginnings of Freemasonry. Freemasonry emerged in the West between the late Middle Ages and the early Renaissance. During the Middle Ages, Europe, then relatively poor, gained substantial knowledge from the Moors and Arabs, leading to its eventual Renaissance. This interaction helped Europe reconnect with its ancient history, including Greek, Roman, and Egyptian influences, sparking a renewed interest in these ancient civilizations. The ideas for Freemasonry were inspired by ancient secret societies, particularly those from ancient Egypt during the European Renaissance. Freemasons present themselves as heirs to the wisdom and humanism of these ancient civilizations, but with different objectives compared to African secret societies, which focused on preserving ancestral knowledge. Freemasonry originated in the Anglo-Saxon world, with the first lodges forming in Scotland, such as the Scottish Lodge of Kilwinning. These ideas then spread to England and across Europe during the Renaissance. Freemasonry played a significant role in shaping European thought, initially opposing the church and monarchy before gaining influence in the 18th century, a time known as the Age of Enlightenment. Freemasons, often seen as brothers of the light, were prominent figures in this era. Many influential Western philosophers, scientists, and proponents of human rights, republicanism, and democracy were either Freemasons or closely associated with the society. In Europe, as the traditional power of the church and monarchy declined, Freemasonry and democratic ideals began to rise. Freemasonry, with its influential ideas and network, began to play a role similar to that of the clergy in the past, influencing the direction of Western societies. At the same time, republics and democratic systems started to replace or significantly alter the old monarchical systems, such as in the formation of parliamentary monarchies. This shift was also evident in the United States, where several of the founding fathers and writers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons. Their Masonic background played a role in shaping the democratic principles and structures that are foundational to the United States. Freemasonry often incorporates ancient symbols in its practices, which might suggest a spiritual aspect. However, it's important to understand that the spiritual element in Freemasonry is more symbolic than actual. Masonic lodges don't focus on traditional spirituality or religion. Instead of referring to specific religious deities, they use terms like the great architect of the universe to maintain a more universal appeal. In practice, Masonic lodges function more as networks for business and social interests rather than as religious or spiritual groups. They welcome members from various backgrounds, including different religious beliefs, which is why you might find rabbis, priests, pastors, or imams in their membership. This inclusivity underscores the lodge's focus on worldly affairs rather than on spiritual matters. During the European Renaissance, Europe embarked on major expansionist projects like exploration, conquest, and exploitation, including slavery and colonization. Masonic lodges, which were already present, often supported these imperialist endeavors. These projects, marked by Freemasonry, were portrayed as acts of humanism and civilization by Europe, despite their exploitative nature. As Europeans established themselves in various continents, they set up Masonic lodges to aid their conquests contributing to the spread of these lodges worldwide. This global expansion of Freemasonry, intertwined with political, economic, and geostrategic interests, has led to its current influence and the concept of a new world order often associated with it. The first Masonic lodge in Africa was established in what is now Senegal in 1781 by the French during the slave trade era. As colonization progressed, Masonic lodges multiplied across the continent, often including businessmen and merchants among their members. 
These lodges played a role in shaping the political landscape of Africa, influencing the establishment of republics and disrupting traditional systems of power. Many African Masonic lodges are linked to parent lodges in the West, particularly in France, suggesting external influence over African lodges. This has led to the control of African elites, including presidents and decision makers, by Western interests through Masonic connections. Prominent African leaders, such as Félix Houphouët Boigny, John Kufour, George Wea, and Thabo Mbeki, have been associated with Freemasonry. This is just a tip of the iceberg. There are even more prominent African leaders associated with Freemasonry. New members in these lodges often undergo ceremonies and make commitments to serve Freemasonry's interests, sometimes at the expense of their own country's needs. This manipulation extends to political actions. Interestingly, Freemasonry's influence is not limited to politics. It also extends to the realm of cultural and spiritual perceptions. Freemasonry's use of African symbols, such as the pyramids and Ankh cross, in its logos and propaganda, has led to a misunderstanding of African spirituality. This confusion has been exploited by other religious groups to discourage Africans from embracing their ancestral spiritual practices, furthering the agenda of Western domination. Europeans, inspired and fascinated by Egyptian civilization, created Freemasonry, or more recent, secret societies. Their goals are completely opposite to those of our ancestors in ancient Egypt. Freemasonry's influence in African politics is a subject of debate, characterized by its extensive network of influential members, including business leaders, politicians. Many African leaders are believed to be Freemasons, potentially swaying political decisions to favor the organization's interests. The legacy of Freemasonry, dating back to colonial times, continues to impact political structures. Africans must reject Freemasonry as part of our renaissance, since it does not serve our best interests. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. We would like to say a special thank you to our channel members. Nubian Storytellers, see you on the next one. Remember, we are one black Africa.